Hi everyone, so we're in Brooklyn recording Paradise with Brian, how are you? Doing well, how are you? And of course our good friend Mr. Weather, do I do everything? Do I do Paul, Willie Green, Wormack? We can I... just go with Willie Green. We'll, we'll, let's, Willie Green, Let's okay. just keep it simple. It's smooth. Smooth. Hey, how are you? Good to have you here. Lovely to be here. This is quite unusual for Brooklyn because we were talking about this earlier that a couple of friends I have places out here, you basically just kind of walk in and then it's just door, door, door. You know, and that's actually quite common in major cities, you know, for square footage. But you actually have a lounge. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Very grateful, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Very grateful. And a kitchen area. Yeah, yeah. We got the yeah. kitchen. You we know, got the coffee. We got the Chemex. We've even got a shower. If you want to come and yeah. camp out and really lock in for a week, we can really do the full, nice. the full lock. Yeah, we can sort so, it out. Yeah. yeah. You can, you can have a band sleep in here. I'm sure. Yeah. Has it happened? It'll be all right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not very frequently, but if it has to. Yeah. Do what we got to do. Excellent, know? excellent. Yeah. Well, can we check out your room, bro? Absolutely. Come on. Great. Enjoy. Pedal tastic. Pedal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Our super fancy pedal show. Yeah, exactly. It's and beautiful. It's very nice. I'm My very... favorite part of the whole building. <laughs> Come on in, Zara control room. I mean, presumably it was built as a recording studio. It was. There was a studio prior to us here. I believe they were called Wonder Park that um, I guess had to split during COVID. So when we found it, the floors were already floated. We had a little. Uh, little window into the live room here, Fantastic. double doors. So that was great. And of course, the lovely porthole. I love that. Out into the lounge. Yeah. So I decided to, a little unusual for a control room, but decided to keep it. Keeps the, keeps no, the vibe like it. right. It reminds me of uh, Pete Townsend's studio. Yes. He has all the portholes and stuff on Ilpa Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like love that, that. Love feeling that. of a ship. Yeah, it's great. And it keeps it feel a little less closed in. It's not a huge control room, so having the you know, opens it up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. so look, the centerpiece is definitely this yes, console, absolutely. which I don't know much about, Sound Workshop. Sure, so Sound Workshop, from my, my understanding, um, was built around, this, this particular console was built winter of 1980 by some former API engineers after API temporarily went under. And then they existed for, I think four or five years, and then were bought by Atari. Oh, so, okay. And then that's why they disappeared. They didn't exist for very long. It's very open sounding. It's very clean. This one's been heavily modified. So the way I use it essentially is a 24 channel summing mixer with EQs. There's no subgroups or anything. We do have some echo sends and returns primarily used for tracking. And then I'll use it on the summing stage a lot during mixing. And I was told after I purchased it, I'm inclined to believe the guy was previously owned by Cool and the gang. So nice. the more you know. I've never seen one before. And I'm sure there's a hundred people now commenting like, I can't believe that you've never seen one as well. But no, I, I haven't. And it's I fun. I haven't seen a ton of them either, but this one's, this one's been serving us great since we moved into this location last year. How did you find it? Uh, I found it on Reverb, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. I was looking during COVID and we were uh, trying to find a new building and I was like, it's time to get a console. And uh, this would have been sitting for a while. So found it, went How down much? to Florida. How much? Yeah. Take a guess. What do we think? I have no idea. I know. I think I actually scooped it for around twenty-eight hundred. Oh, really? It had been sitting for about eight months wow. on reverb. That's fantastic. Peak winter during COVID was. Wow! Brutal. Congrats. Thank you. I love how wide the channels are. It's nice. I don't want to very touch the face. No, I know please, you're working. Yeah, no, but, it's, yeah. it's all right. It's all right. Very wide. Um, it's been solid. Went down to Florida. I drove it back in a box truck, all the way up here, from Florida, in a so blizzard. So cool. So it was great. <laughs> It was a good time, but um, yeah, it's got mic pre's on every channel, got line ins. Uh, we usually normal the Apollo outputs to, right. the, to the tape ins on the console. Now I see both so you got it set worked out. Both of you have the Wes Audio stuff. Oh my gosh, amazing! I saw it in Willie's room. I heard it. I believe he has the tube version, but this is sort of the SSL style bus compressor that's fully automated uh, with digital recall, which is very convenient. Pop right. between tracks and it just. I use it on your mix bus. Instantly populates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mix bus. Use it on drums a lot too, but right. usually usually hangs out on the mix bus. And is that the same for the APIs that are on the mix bus too? Um, I mostly use the APIs during guitar tracking. Okay. Like today guitars, and then they'll usually sit on my kick in and snare top mics. So is this 24 channels total? Yes. In and out. Yeah, yeah, 24, 24 in and out. So Apollo Very stuff's nice. great cook a lot on the way in, so it's been Oh, I'm good. looking at this VHT. I remember, remember the first time I heard one of these. It was the really? loudest, <laughs> brightest amp I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, we got the, as you can see, the, the presence knobs dialed a little, a little further back, so they... Uh, yeah, and the treble's back, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they can they get a little bright. 
But yeah. the mids are great. They sound sound great on just about everything. So it's that and the bandmaster usually the two go tos. You got some really nice stuff here. I haven't seen for a bit. Like Thank I love you. the yeah. Pendulum Quartet. That's really nice. Beautiful. Yeah, a lot of it's our other partner Jesse Cannon's prees. Um, so that that Pendulum has been hanging around for a long time. It's pretty much just our uh, go to vocal strip. The so. Joe Meek stuff. Joe Meek's fun. The undertone audio are my current favorite. These Amazing, two, yeah. they're on absolutely everything. A lot of times I'll run my uh, mix out into them, just kind of print, hit the transformers kind of hard. If I'm doing some heavier rock leaning stuff. And then the Neve style stuff, mm -hmm. you've got the Heritage and then the Warms. All the way down. They're both great. They're both great. I really love the meters, having the meters on the Warms. That's kind of my one complaint if I were to have one on the Heritage is just uh, seeing the signals nice. APIs are solid. Six channels out. I, I love these. These are very, very underrated. Uh, yeah. I used to have 20 channels of 212. Really? I used to track through, yeah. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah. They're yeah. great. Love them on drums in particular. That's what I used to do on yeah. drums, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. They're very underrated. Yeah. This is a nice piece of oh, germanium, yeah. The feedback, the feedback knob is super fun. You know, it's very unique. Don't have it on a lot of other stuff. So it's been, it's been great. Um, sits on rock vocals a lot. Um, or bass amps too. I like to use that. Now so. the ART stuff. Uh, my friend Auric Wild swears by this. They're fantastic. Those are both actually Willies um, in the other room. So he oh, has lovely. these. I believe they're modified. Um, the thing that I love most about the pre's is the variable impedance, um, which I don't see a lot on other preamps. It's usually like the warms will have a switch for the tone. But, yeah, that's the old knee thing, yeah. Yeah, but can really, really shape the mid-range in a way I can't with a lot of other preamps. Wonderful. Um, Distressors, the Swiss Army knife of compression. Classic. They work, usually kick in, snare top again, same thing with the APIs. I'll usually run the API EQs into the Distressors. They've been great. Um, Black Lions, I haven't so used these. So good. They're fantastic. The mix knob is the best. The best. Having that mix knob to do a little parallel compressions, fantastic. They sound great. The Bluey, I believe, was made in collaboration with Chris Lord Algae and is modeled off a particular blue stripe unit he has. Oh, I didn't um, know that. And I think they even included a clone of his SSL insert path from the console inside of the 1176. So it's very unique. It has a lot of flavor, sometimes too much, but it sounds, it sounds great. If you want something bold, it definitely works. This is one of my favorite utilitarian pieces. Oh yeah, super quick, super yeah. quick to set up. Same thing with the 163, just having the slider, it just works, it works very fast. So those are kind of no brainers and just work yeah, absolutely. All, the all the time. Transient designers? Yeah, excuse the lay. <laughs> oh no, it's quite right. The transient designers are great, using to shape the attack on room mics a lot for drums. Right. Mostly. Mostly Do you print the with the lands. Uh, yeah, usually. Usually right. I print them straight in. I'll, tr I'll generally try to keep it light because I do a lot of the transient design stuff in the box, but you know, pushing those into a compressor can help a little bit. Kinda now, Auburn, Auburn was, was, was dreadfully ignored for years. Do you think it's starting to get known again? I have seen them popping back up in some yep. studios around here. Um, they're fantastic. They sound, they sound great. That reverb's a lot of fun. Uh, the compressor is Willie's as well, so we, we kind of move some gear back and forth between the rooms, but compressor's a good time. Yeah, I remember working at a studio when I first moved to LA that had a whole bunch of different Auburn kind of gear, and I did like the way you could abuse them. Yeah. They, do, they, <laughs> yeah. they get quite interesting yeah, sounding. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A lot now, of fun, as far so. as all the digital effects, are you finding that, you, are you still using them, printing through them? or you... I use them very sparingly. Um, I use them very sparingly. But um, the Rev 7's obviously a lot of fun. Incredible. Uh, PCM 42 is fantastic. And yep. the PCM 70, obviously. But that Rev 7 probably gets the most use out of all of them. But um, most of my time-based stuff ends up being in the box. I don't get to do as much out of the box mixing as I'd like to, just having multiple projects open. So they, uh, when I do get to use them, it's a nice treat. It's I fun. don't know anything about like this. The project has Nico enough time. or Nico, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's very, it's kind of like a hall. You have a hall reverb that you can change a little bit. And this distance knob is very interesting. It has like a unique, I'm not sure how the, 
the algorithm works on the inside of it, but it has a it is a very unique thing. It's not super hi-fi, but it um sounds cool. It sounds cool when I can use it. So LT yeah, Pro. Another then. ART, the proverb, yeah. And I love right at the very end of all the gear oh, is the, the 3630. One. Yes, the 3630. The legendary 3630. I, yeah. I, the, to me, this is always an interesting jumping on off point between professional and semi-professional gear. Mm -hmm. Is that you go to the big box music stores and they would sell you on the idea that this could do a hundred different things because it had so many knobs and switches. Mm -hmm. And then you go into your first professional studio and you'd see this. Yes. And you're like, this has got four controls and this one's yeah. got like 40. Keep I'm exaggerating. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, and it was interesting that, you know, in a professional environment, you sort of want simplicity and quickness of, mm. and these were so fiddly to use. I had one. A little bit of a learning curve for sure, but if you can get it dialed in, you can yeah, set it. Yeah, getting dialed in and this yeah, suddenly you... becomes the easiest thing ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The one thing I do remember about if you put that on your mix bus, all the low end just disappears. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so monitors, you've got little uh, 1030s? Yeah, 1030s, they're fantastic. Been, they've basically been the only monitors I've ever mixed on. Um, this is the classic setup, the General X with the NS10s. It's, if it ain't broke. That's what I grew up on. Yeah, it's 1032s great. with NS10s. It's great. The NS10s are fun. I check in mono on the NS10s a lot. Oh, you just use usually one side. The woofers have been replaced. I believe they're the CLA. Any perceptible difference? Um, I honestly didn't get to A-B them right off the bat since the last ones broke in transit. But your ear, you have To me, they sound fantastic. Okay, yeah. great. No, no problems. I'm sure, you know, some cones that have been sitting for 30 years, of course, are going to be a little bit different. But sure. they do the job. They work the way they're supposed to work for me, so. Lovely. Is that the power amp down there for the NS10s? That, um, that's the power amp actually for the console. Oh, a power the supply for the yeah, console. The ah, workshop. okay. So what are you driving NS10s with? Um, we have a monoprice little amp over here on this side and this very uh, professional copy over here. Just that, just that one guy. And what's that tape machine over there? The tape machine, I believe, is a Fostex R16. Wow, I remember those um, well. The tape heads need alignment. That's next. We just had to had a piece blow up inside the console recently, so the, the tape head stacks next to get fixed. No, so, this is great. One at a time, yeah. A profit, I see. Absolutely. That thing is a lot of fun. Um, another, another learning curve beast. Once you get it dialed in, it's great. It's so much fun, and I do admittedly use the MIDI out a lot for stuff in the box. When I have the time on a record to kind of explore some different wild synth sounds, it's, can't beat it. It's great. So. Amazing. Let's check out your library. Absolutely. Come on through. So this is drum room, amp room. Oh, wow. It's Cut vocals inside. Quite live in here. It I'm is doing very the obligatory live. clap your hands. You got to do it. It is, doesn't really prove anything. It but... is very live. Yeah. Um, the moving blankets do a lot, particularly around the drums. Um, pretty wide swath of genres will come through for drum it's recordings. It's a great space so. to have out in Brooklyn. Yeah, thank really you. Nice. I'm, I'm very excited about it. I'm super grateful, super happy to have this space. It's been wonderful. So yeah, we, really we building this diffuser wall was very fun <laughs> when we moved in. It's a quarter mile of pine split up one at a time. So wow, nice. Did that in one manic go on like a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. So let's knock this out. So it sounds great. Uh, brass sounds really great in here. Brass and strings sound wonderful in this room. Usually, sometimes I'll push the kit back and get right under this super soft, <laughs> super soft cloud to kind of soak up some of that attack. Yeah, but, but I think this this looks like it would be, from what I can tell, a really nice little drum room. Oh yeah, it's been great. We've had five piece bands live track in here nice. too, squeezing everybody in. So there's no ah uh, ah uh, like a 400ish thing. Mm -hmm. But that's why you always scoop that out of the drums anyway. Always. Yeah. First thing to go for me yeah. to cut on those APIs. Is I'm looking at this usually. Greco. I've, I've, I've already got a pick in my hand. Ah, yes. <laughs> the, the 335 copy, if I remember correctly. It's yeah, been great. Lovely. Yeah, I love that. Beautiful. It's nice. It's very, very smooth. So are you a guitar player? Yes. Primarily bass guitar these days, but I do. I've been playing guitar for long long time. jazz master oh, yeah 60s Tele. reissue jazz master three tellies big nice. telly fan so we have a uh that's a made in japan reissue oh it's gorgeous it's been and someone my favorite part someone modified the output they put like a little speaker lock like, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah it's not going anywhere but that thing's great the frets are great on that particular telly 
Um, I love that color with the binding. Yeah, it's fantastic. Really and then nice. that base six is my most recent scoop. I saw it in the oh. I saw it in the Beatles doc, and I was like, we got to find one of these. Oh yeah, with with John playing it. Yeah, that one. yeah. yeah. Um, it's got a new bridge, sixty-two Jag pickup in the neck. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love the color. Thank you. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Absolutely. And then, the, and then uh, a baritone. Yes, <laughs> the baritone special. Get to work on a lot of like heavier records, punk records, stuff like that. So favorite trick is I'll layer that in as like a third guitar underneath, like on the chorus is just kind of dead center. And it adds a lot, it does a lot, so. And then a, a, trem, a trem with tons of reverb as well. Yeah, I mean, you get, always works, Yeah, always works out. Wonderful. Those are you, my daily drivers for guitars. Usually we have these out. I see a lot of uh, amps around. You've got amps in, in the in the yes. uh, foyer Yeah, there, there are a ton of amps. We have a primarily metal producer, Dean Rispler, that works out of here. And he B18? Has, um, I believe so. We have a B18 and a B15. And that one, that one oh, gets okay, the yeah. most use. And then the little Ampeg Rocket Cab oh, okay, is great. down there as well. Um, that Fender in the corner is another... I'm actually not sure if it's designed for bass, but Super 6... I use for bass all the time. Uh, it's just a very unique kind of. So uh, is it is it like six ten inch speakers? It is six ten inch speakers. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah six ten silver face. It feels like something like a, with a Telecaster, very Roy Buchanan. Mm. That's not what he used, but that kind of thing, like really bright, loud. It's got a tele- it's got a sound for sure. It's got a sound. So my little orange eighty fifteen combo. Lovely. Tube. It's fun. It sounds great. And what's the kit? Is this your house kit? Yes, it's a DW custom kit. Um, gets used probably 90% of records we do in here. A lot of New York musicians don't have their drum kits. Hard to lug around, obviously, on yeah. the subway. So, subway um, and cabs, yeah. It tunes to a lot of different things very easily. And I haven't found a drum head that didn't work. So between our snare collection and you know the shells, it's, it's working. It's been working Good for a long Zildjans. time. So, mm-hmm. Have a lot of Zildjian, some Sabian, the AX symbols as well. We use a lot of. I'm a big fan of JCM 900s. I oh, think, you are? Yeah, I think they're Amazing. completely maligned. I think oh. people don't like them. I don't no. know why. They're great. I've done hundreds of tracks with that head. It's yeah. fantastic. It's my, it's our guitar players, uh, guitar players had the 900. It's fantastic. I could always make a 900 sound like a classic old school Marshall, but an 800 just has like this sound. That's... It's its own thing for yeah. sure. That it's one definitely, to me was always lane. more versatile. They're great. Absolutely no complaints. Yeah, it's very maligned. People always seem to put them down, I think. Yeah. I, I don't get that. They work well clean, too, if yeah, you need to, which a lot of people don't dive into. But. Yeah, 800 a, a clean is like, twing, twing, twinky, twinky. That clean still got some, like, Fantastic. meat to it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's got a lot of, the mid, the mid is very pronounced yeah. on that head when it's clean. Yeah, so if you see 900s going cheap, buy them, because they're freaking awesome. They're great. Yeah, they're great. Really good. Uh, so, Mike wise, is that an eighty-seven or? A... Yeah, that is the warm eighty-seven. Yeah. Uh, How do you find it? I haven't used one yet. I think they're fantastic. These are the two warms we have in here. Are Willys? They have the tran- They have a transformer mod. Yeah, the tran- right? transformer mod. The, the Zen Pro Audio mod. Yeah. yeah, unbelievably good. They're great. I've only gotten to use a real eighty-seven a handful of times in my day, but these, they work. They sound great. The mids are very sweet. Vocals, drum overheads, cabs. They're right. fantastic. And then I have a 57 I took the transformer out of on the other side. Oh, wow. So you got, so you got the 87 with the additional mm-hmm. one and then the yeah, uh, little 57 ironic. removed. Yeah, taking yeah. them out. Nice. Taking them out. So it's fun. Nice. People like those on snares because they say it enhances the transient and stuff. I think so. I would agree with that. You found that? Yeah. Okay. It's definitely a, a touch sharper for sure. Great. And then, great. well, sort of mic-wise, I see uh, uh, 421s. Yeah, SM7. generally, we have a D112 from AKG on the inside of the kit. This is yep. a Loughton 357 we love on the Loughton. outside. 421s on toms, yep. SM7 on the top, and then I usually have a 57 on the bottom as well. Right. So, Any so mic in a hat? Yes, usually another 57, that one in the back on the hats. Ooh, is that a uh, Sennheiser 441? 441. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That one will get snare top duty sometimes as well. I don't see these enough. These yeah. sound great. I don't, they, 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 do sound, they do sound great. They sound great, yeah. And they look awesome. Yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> they, uh, they definitely do the job. But I generally leave these drum mics 
up all the time. And if so, you know, a en different engineer requests something else, I'm happy to swap stuff out. But it's uh, just kind of my go-to. Well, it's always nice when you walk into a room and, and, and it's pretty dialed in, especially when these days where there's not the budget to spend the six weeks right. in the studio. Yeah, it saves. It's more like six days or yeah. six hours. <laughs> yeah, <It> saves, <laughs> leaving it up saves a lot of time. If people aren't too picky about mics, I'm like, this works. Right. And they're usually happy, so. Great. That's what counts, right? It's great. I want your sort of go to headphones. We have these AKGs. I'm actually not sure the model. The, the K275s. Yeah. And then I also have a pair of the Behringer. I'm sorry, not the Behringer. The, um, what are they? The DT770s. Oh, the, 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 the bi Biodynamics. Biodynamic. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Yeah, those, those are, are fantastic. Great. We use those. And I don't have them here, but at home I mix a lot with the pair of Grado headphones. Don't know this. The, uh, they're like a family company in uh, Sunset Park over in Brooklyn. Oh, They've been making them for like 60 years. They're, op they're open back, so they're definitely not for everybody, but the detail has been unmatched for me, I think. Do you like to go home and take it out of the environment and mix it Absolutely. Home? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Just like lay down at home, no one else around, just check stuff. No pressure. Great. Come back. <laughs> Notepad. <laughs> Come back and make some, no make some changes in person, so. That's great. That's good. That's great. Uh, and your monitoring system, you use, I haven't seen this Behringer before. Yeah, I believe they're called the... PowerPlay 16. Yeah, so it's 16 channels over Ethernet, which is great. So right. I have an Ethernet channel running from the control room. Uh, whoever's doing what they're doing, they can just make the mix from the headphone app. And it's been, uh, it's been great. That's great. And then there's some EQ on there as well. And that, Absolutely. That really EQ. helps. There's a limiter that's very annoying because it doesn't doesn't work very well, and I gotta always gotta crank it back out. But they're they're fine headphone amps for for live. Oh wow, Pitbull! Yes, how did yes. I miss this? The Pitbull. Wow, it's been great. Another VHT head, hundred yeah. watts. Our other guitar player uses that for rhythm, and it's uh, it's heavy. And what's the name of your band again? You just uh, it's called that. Super Bloom. Super Bloom. Super Bloom. What's your genre? Uh, it's it's pretty grunge. Alternative grunge, we get, you know, like Nirvana, Smashing Pumpkins references a lot, which I love. I love those bands. Great. So, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple other amps in the hallway to check out, but aside from that, I think this is, this is pretty much it. What you see is what we have. No, out. this is so, perfect. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Yeah, out here we have, it's a little dark. Oh, okay. But we have oh, some. Oh, nice. I'll let you go ahead. So is, is, this, uh, is this JTM 45? Yes. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I had one of these for years. How old is this one? I'm honestly not sure. It was one of our studio partners that's been around for a long time, but we've been... Uh, what I used to do when around. I was touring is I, I, I went out with this on its own, and then the second half of the tour, I brought my 900 head out, disconnected this amp, and put the 900 through, through the 212. Wow, I've not tried that. It was so good. <laughs> so good through a 212. I gotta try that out. I gotta oh, try that dude, out. Oh, dude, you got a JC50. Jazz yeah, the jazz chorus. SVT, Great. the Princeton. Yeah. What's this little baby here? Uh, it's like a Fender, like a reverb tank. Oh, great. Yeah. That Ampeg rocket head is fantastic. Yeah. Um, oh, you solid state. It's quick. It works all the time, which is most important. Is that an AC30? Yes. Nice. We got an AC30 down there. Basement. Basement's great. And what's this here with two tubes sitting in the front? That is actually in some custom pre-builder built it, I think around 2000, just some nameless tube preamp. That's, I think there's a label on the bottom that might say who built it or who on the, I'm sorry, on the, the other that, plate here. What does that say, Eric? There's a white tag by JC Morrison. Down there too. Oh, yeah. there's also that, that white tag right there. It says no user adjustable parts. Oh, great. Please refer to great company. Tubesville. I, lo I love them. They're fantastic. Tubesville Tech. They're fantastic. They're so Tubesville good. Tubesville Tech. Built in 99, May of 99. Wow. Tubesville Tech. Lovely. Yeah, it's been great. Some old stuff sitting around. Pure Space Amp, the B2, an old, our backup, the 192. So this is kind of the storage shelf for some old stuff that's been hanging around. But. This, this is actually kind of fun. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think um, Dave Jordan had one of these, and he lent it to me with tons of other gear. And just for a joke, I tried it, and uh, I really liked the way it compressed on certain things, especially on, like, mono room mics and things like that. Ah. You just want something kind of like a sledgehammer or yeah. something silly. Maybe I should bring it back out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good shot. You should check it out. 
It's been a, it's throw, been a long time. Throw a cheap mic up in the corner or something. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I do like the Dual Terra. The Dual Terra is fantastic. It contrasts really well with that tube combo we've got in there. It just does a totally different thing. And I love the simplicity of the tone knob just between bass and yeah. <laughs> keeps it easy. Well, I always remember as a kid just looking at these symbols and being, what the, what is that? I you love it. Like... It's so primal. I love it. <laughs> it's just keeping it, keeping it easy. And it's been like PV when you're a kid and they'd have like things like crunch, which you could understand, but then they had other descriptions. I can't remember, you know, just random words. You're like, what does that mean? Is it bass? Is it treble? Is it gain? <laughs> right. I can't, I, I don't even remember now. Answers on the postcard down below, please, that people yes. watching. <laughs> Oh, and some snares, additional snares. Yes. Let's not forget that. What's some more this? snares, of course. Is this course. an old Ludwig? Um, let me pull that one out. I'm trying, I'm trying to, to remember what we got in there. I'm trying to think of that, what well, it looks like an old Ludwig. It is. Yeah. It is. It's very like flat. Like a student very model or something? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's one of our partner's old student, the old student snares. So it's Love fun. it. I used that one. This one is my next, let me get this out of the way. My next one. Is this a Steve Ferroni? Yes. Oh, that, this, this is a secret weapon. I've used more snare. than almost any other snare. Yeah, since I had one of these for years. These are amazing. The Steve Ferronis. It's been great. It's like, a, honestly, it's like a, a, a Black Beauty on acid. And I like that. It's absolutely wonderful. So the band Night Surf we've got in right now, we did this for their first three releases and it's been. Yeah. It's been great. We're trying the, um, the Vinnie Paul signature snare oh, on this record. That. <laughs> I haven't said that yet. That's out up there. It's very deep. It's fantastic. The drummers that know know that that snare is unbelievable. I have never seen anything quite like this one. What is that? It's 20, 20 something ply. Feel wow. It. Feel it. Yeah. It's got some. It's got some weight to it for a wood snare. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> got the Imperial Star, the Pig Light Acrylic. They've been they've been solid. A couple other DW snares. Usually I lean into these on the bottom rack. Yep. And then the Vinnie Paul, of course, has been has been solid. Oh, and we I, I think it's in the other room. We can oh, get the, vis, the, Vista the Vista lights. Yeah. Vista lights are fantastic. So we've got a bit of a Vista light down here. If we uh, flip around, Eric, yeah. we can go back that way. Here we have obligatory members of band waiting to track. Yes, <laughs> Chris Mele of Night Surf, wonderful wonderful rock band out here out of Brooklyn. Great. Marvelous. Been recording them for five years. I'm excited to have them back. You should finish the album then. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Third location we've tracked at. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Third go. So we've been, yeah, been so letting it. This is the best one by, by a lot. I appreciate that. It's, it's been fun. Yeah, we've got the Vistalite kit in the corner. Yeah, the rest of the Vistalite. Leslie? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Dual Rectified Leslie Combo. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting one for sure. We have a head. It's actually Eric's. We have it at the studio. What is this? This is a funny little pian organ. It's got, if you flip the top, yeah, I'll get that plant out of it, but you flip it up and it's, uh, yeah. Is it? It's got some funky, you gotta plug it in, but it's, it's got some funky sounds for sure. A product of Farfisa. Mm-hmm. Rhodes. Lovely. Rhodes is great. Rhodes has been great. I don't know this. Titana. I haven't seen a lot of them, but they have a very kind of old school beachy sound. Kind of same with the magneton. That magneton has a tiny speaker in it. Yeah, I can see. So like this huge thing. Yeah. Almost like, like it's kind of like a character moldings. like effect amp, sort yeah, of. That's awesome. So what is this a, just a cab or is it? Yeah, I'm actually not sure which head it's supposed to go to, but it's just been like a it's been sitting here forever. It's got one big speaker in it. So and then we have a couple couple loose PA speakers, uh, Ampeg cab, that big fifteen Ampeg cab at the right. bottom holding it down. And what's this? Is it a big old Fender cab? Yes. Yeah, on that side. Lovely. Yeah. Great. Oh, Absolutely. another. While we're talking cabs, last but no means least. I mean, you know. the Bandmaster cab. The Bandmaster cab. Great. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. It might be the basement. I think it goes with the basement. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. Brian, so, thanks very much. Absolutely. Thanks so much for doing this. We I appreciate really appreciate it. it. Absolutely. Enjoy. So we'll put a, I presume you have a website, yes? Yes. So there's going to be a link down there to a website. Please go and check it out. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Have a good day. Au revoir. Adios. Ciao. Goodbye. Thanks so much.